Since we've been in St. Martin, we've decided it would be a good idea to get Ricky's knee sorted out, so we rented a car and headed off to the nearest hospital to make an appointment. It's a monster. It's a monster. Where are we headed to right now? Heading to the doctor for another appointment. Hopefully, if we can get another appointment. Not very really sure. I think we will. Think so? Yes, positive thoughts. Positive thoughts, that's true. You could only get an appointment on the French side on the third. So we're going to try the Dutch side and see if we can get an appointment earlier. And if it the, it's too late, he's not going to do the surgery here. Yeah, he'll just wait. Because he's naughty. In case you don't remember what happened to Ricky's knee, we thought he had torn his meniscus when he decided to race weight in Antigua. The following night was New Year's Eve, so we invited friends over to the boat for drinks and barbecue before we hit the night out. Since we'll be leaving the sailing community here on YouTube soon, be sure to follow Sailing Sunday to get your sailing fix. We had such a fun evening out with these guys. It's been a while since we've made it past cruises hour, which is 9 p.m. Oh, Hilton Grand Vacation! Oh, <laughs> Ryan went to go pick up a more powerful outboard for their dinghy and Ricky tagged along. Hey Ryan, <laughs> so you bought a new motor, how's yeah. it going? It's going well man. Check out that speed oh, man. Yeah, how quiet is it? <laughs> eh? It's quiet. amazing, new electric. It's making noise. <laughs> so that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. Just get a good tow. I think this is the new electric motor, this is how they work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, eh? Full fuel efficient. <laughs> fuel efficient. We ain't not burning any fuel, getting a good tow. <laughs> So after a week of feeling like beep, <laughs> I'm feeling way better now. I edit that out. Huh? I have had a what is it? A sin uh, sinusitis. Sinusitis. And man, oh man, you'd never think about a sinus would make you that sick. Man flu. Someone says man flu, but that that was hectic. So I was sleeping in the one cabin, Simone sleeping in the aft cabin. So we think it might have been contagious, which I think it's not. I think it is. But anyways, after a week of being on the boat, it's time to get the hell out of here. I'm going to shower, get ready. We're going to go to town. It's been overcast for about like five, six, seven days now. It's Maybe been even longer. It's overcast because you've been in your bed. The sun has been shining. Apparently <laughs> the... Future's been bright all along, but we put the covers on I know we haven't hit a hundred percent in the last eight days. Yeah, we haven't. And the only reason that happens is because it's over cost or getting minimal sun. And, we and I look at the MPPT the uh, readouts, and they not getting into um, into float. And the only reason that happens is just because there's not enough power. Look at the power outputs; everything looks fine there. It's just not so sunny. It looks like this every day. See? So, it's not good power production. Now, we can make water, we can do all of that. We just want to get up to 100% and stuff. And not only for that, but we're thinking for the Bahamas. And we've got family coming out to visit. Be able to just make endless amounts of water, endless washing. Just like, so we think of getting a generator. Uh, it's just going to be a portable one. It's probably not going to work that hard. It's really only going to be every once in a while to top up and when we have guests or like really overcast days for long periods of time. But yeah, I mean, other than that, the boat's always been self-sufficient. So, and it's good for us too. It's perfect. Like we really don't need it. It only takes a bit of strain when there's like a few more people and more demands on the boat or when you're having lots of parties and the ice makers going and the microwaves going and doing laundry and everything all at once then she wants a little bit more but other than that it goes fine but yeah so generators on the list 
Um, so we're thinking one of these nice little light compact generators. I know there's a, a store in town here that we might go check out. Taking off all the sheets because I think like all the fluey stuff, take all of that, drop it off. But anyways, let me hit a shower and we can show you guys what we're going to do. Ah, oh, feels so much better now. It's like after a week of being sick and like it gets over, you feel like a new man. Like it cured things that were wrong before that you didn't even know that were wrong. But anyways, feel way better. Um, talk a little bit about St. Martin. It's kind of an interesting place. Uh, it's like a lot of fancy jets like this. A lot of a very really cool runway landing. Um, it's two different. Well, it's one island owned by two different countries. One's French, one side's French, one side's Dutch. But you can just use your dinghy and kind of. So that's pretty much. I'd say the Dutch line. It's a little bit before that bridge. But this side we're on the French side, that side we're on the Dutch side, this side you don't pay to be in the water, that side you pay to be in the water. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic like that. Too busy at the moment except for all the super yachts which we'll take a video when we go in. There's a lot of super yachts on the Dutch side. This is one of the annoying things about being here. If these guys try and come as close as possible to you as they can. Very touristy. Um, it's kind of built more for cruise ships and fly-ins as opposed to sailing. But one thing that is good for sailing is if you need to get work done, this is one of the better places to get it done. Like supplies to get everything duty-free. Duty-free, you kind of take it with a pinch of salt. Stuff's still expensive. It's still Caribbean prices. You are getting generally better prices than what you are seeing in the rest of the Caribbean. Food's good. Food's good. There's a lot of fresh produce. Um, food wise on par with Martinique really nice and good better than all the Caribbean islands that we've been to so far you can get everything you want big stores so provisioning wise really nice easy to fly in and out of yep a lot of connecting flights I think at a stage over Christmas New Year's that period there was like seven international flights a day this is the big bay that everyone talks about so they're all the way to back there it's about three miles three miles across to 2.4 miles I think and here's Lady Africa just behind this head which is a nice spot our winds are predominantly out of the east which is literally there so we get a little bit of shelter from the the bigger stuff um, and we've got a shallow draft so we can get in nice and close whereas everyone hangs out a bit uh, just because of draft I think because it's really really choppy out there you don't want to be at the back there we took the dinghy to the end there and it's like up to half a meter swells Ricky said oh I'm just gonna go quickly go get um, the dinghy emptied out because it's been it's been raining like non-stop for the last couple of days we had an insane squall come through two nights ago so I think he's full of water because we haven't used it since Ricky's been sick. He's like, I'm just going to go and empty quickly. I'm waiting here. He's, as you can see, he's uh, chatting away. Uh, yeah. So I got my laundry done in the bag. Trash ready to take out. And hopefully we can get a generator so that we can make lots of water. It's not that we need the generator, but we just like it's for our last season we're kind of like it'd be nice to have a generator to be able to just make water continuously as we need um so and top up our batteries most of the time i'm just waiting for ricky 50 years later listen here how how long does it take you to empty the dinghy <laughs> you know how life goes with great power it comes. Great responsibility. No, lots of fuel. Come on, we all know this. <laughs> let's go bother Brittany. Yeah, let's go bother Brittany. Hello Brittany, I'm coming for you. No more sims today. <laughs> How are you liking your outfit? I'm loving it. 
when when everything else fails in your life you buy yourself a Yamaha and you know now I'm joking another one is reliable too it's just that this gives us lots of power and these Enduros are like really really reliable um, power wise if anyone's searching for a tender and an outboard on your boat two things to look for can you and your immediate other or whoever you're going to travel 90% of the time with a little bit of a load can you get on plane if, if the answer is no don't buy that rip get one that will get you on plane now some secrets is the longer she is and the lighter she is the less power you need and then if you're just like me and you just want that extra power you go bigger but it is amazing and you use it a lot and we see how people come past you every day and they're getting soaked by the time they get to shore they're completely wet and it's fine if you're just coming for we... oh i hate these guys check it out watch it and i know it's people having a great time on holiday right in their rooms but after the hundredth one has passed you there's like so much wake going on I gotta join in. Don't go right we just go next to them. I'm chasing them away. I'm I'm like the the wolf keeping the sheep in place. See here starts the wake, and then this is what you do. If you're on the boat, it's more annoying. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and click on the notification bell to alert you when we upload a new episode and like this video as well as share it with your friends and family. It's a free way you can support our channel. So they weren't here. I think they probably went for a walk. So we'll come by later. We're gonna go drop off our laundry first. Get rid of all that. Good. Oh, Ricky's trying to kill me today. I don't know why. <laughs> While we were out and about, we explored the town and grabbed some food before heading back to Sunday to say hi. I don't know where to go. How's your snapper? Delicious. It's, it's actually really good. The brown bean rice. Had a nice salad. And um, this mashed potato salad. Farm.com What's good? Sunday also does animal rescue and this cute boy is up for adoption. So explain what's gonna happen, man, because we haven't discussed what's gonna happen. My knee's up. My knee's broken. She's busted. We got the, the tibia and femur, right? I think so. And then on one of the points on the femur, on the, on the femur, um, it's cracked and broken and dead. And then there's a piece floating around in my knee. And this piece here is about to fall off. Or break. So then, or break off. So they need to go in and find the piece that's floating around because at the moment it's getting stuck in the middle so the knee doesn't bend. And then they need to take this little sucker out and leave a hole there. So I'm supposed to do a, a bone and cartilage graft, but that'll put me out for like a month and a half. So we're just opting that they can just take out the part. Well, that's what the doctor suggested. They'll take it out and then I can repair it in three or four months time. But yeah, my legs burst. That's why we've been doing nothing and being on the boat. And tomorrow I do blood tests. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's your crackish face. <laughs> How does it look? You're ready for surgery. Yeah. I think this is where your ears come out. <laughs> so, 
So we are busy walking to Cop 4. Um, it's our last day before he goes, well, last sec second to last day before he goes to surgery again. Um, so we decided to prep the boat for the VVIs and everything now. And then he can recover and we can chill and then everything's ready to go. So, how's your walking? The knee is doing much better. It's just the last piece that's stuck in the knee that they need to get out so that I can have a better range of motion. And then we should be good to go. One week on my ass and then should be good to go to the BVIs. So yeah, we just parked the dinghy there by Sunday because they're in the living And we're gonna go and get uh, our provisioning. Like it's like shopping in shopping know, like in the US. In the US or in a big grocery store in South Africa. They've got everything. Very Literally everything. Food. That smells really good. Hey? Okay. You get it? You must make them full chore. Stop. No. It's so good. That's the size of a lobster head. Huge. <laughs> so I managed to unpack all the provisioning and we are ready for the BBIs in Bahamas after Ricky's knee surgery. There are a lot of voices. There was a lot of waiting around until Ricky could go into surgery. Ready for Operation 2.0. <laughs> Ready. Still sleeping. Get you at Sparrow Spot. Trying to beat the queue to get operated. Looking stylish. It's so dark in here. So it is now three o'clock, right? Is it three? Yep. Three o'clock, and we still haven't gone in. What time did you get ya? We got ya at 7. <laughs> 6 30 actually. So Ricky has gone in for surgery now and I'm hoping this is gonna be a quick one. They said he's not sleeping over but he's already gone in and it's only four o'clock. Well it is late four o'clock. Um so I don't see us leaving here very soon. Hopefully all goes well. My overall experience getting Ricky getting surgery here. Um, doctors, I feel are good. I just feel like the general, what is it, like customer services of this hospital are bad. Like they couldn't tell me anything, where Ricky would go where he'd stop for surgery and update me on a lot of stuff and then I had an attitude because I speak English and not French so I think that was a bit of an irritant um, but other than that I mean it's just being patient the surgery went well and Ricky healed up nicely and before you know it it was time to go say bye to Sunday and all the foster babies and head off to the BBI's it feels yeah. <laughs> Next week on Lady Africa, we make our way to the BVIs, baby. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. See you guys next week.